Hello, you're watching another edition of Decision 2020, where TVJ speaks with some of the candidates for the September 3 general election. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Now, today we're talking to Pernell Charles Jr., the incumbent JLP candidate for Southeast Clarendon. He won the March 20 by-election, and come September 3, he will face the PNP's Patricia Duncan Sutherland at the polls. Mr. Charles, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So, Mr. Charles, you're going up against the caretaker candidate for uh, Southeast Clarendon, who won by just over 950 mm. votes to the JLP's Rudyard Spencer in the general election of September 2016. Why should people choose you as the candidate, considering that you're relatively new to them? I mean, in March, when I came to Southeast Clarendon, um, None of us here would have known that we would face the global pandemic in the way that we have had to, to handle it, because this constituency has had a severe impact. Um, I believe that since then, we have seen uh, in, in my leadership and through the leadership of this government, um, the steady head and the kind of ability and competence to manage our issues in the most challenging times. What Jamaica needs now, what Southeast Clarendon wants now, is a type of leadership that provides certainty, the type of leadership that they can be reassured in um, and know that there is a vision and an ability to execute towards that vision. We have balanced in Southeast Clarendon the health and welfare of our constituents with the ability to still continue infrastructure development. There's been significant road work in the less than six months that I've been here, Farmers Cross Road, Rosewell Road, now we're fixing Kennedy Grove, Halsall and Dampier have been finished, um, and we're doing other roads to come, Savannah Cross. Uh, there's been significant improvement in the water systems here since I have been here. We're continuing the good work of our former member of parliament, and I'm working with the mayor to complete Portland Cottage and Rocky Point. We've started and completed uh, the road, the, Rasta Corner in Freetown area, and people are now connecting to the main. Um, and we've done a lot in terms of improving, increasing trucking, increasing the, the delivery of tanks and the installation of wayside tanks to increase storage capacity. In Halsa, we've increased the storage capacity there by 10,000 gallons. Um, and we continue to raise awareness on issues related to COVID. We had a comprehensive COVID-19 response working with the agencies and ensuring that there's distribution of resources and support. Uh, and other things such as working with the SCJ, we did a tour with SCJ to look on land titling and to look on issues like lighting um, and issues that affect the constituents here directly. Jobs, you would note that the free zone, which was started by our former prime minister and member of parliament, Hugh Lawson Shearer, and shut down thereafter, we have worked with the Factories Corporation of Jamaica, and we're proud to say that uh, this government is going to be the government that can state that it redeveloped and restarted, reopened the free zone as a state-of-the-art industrial complex. Foster is the first company to sign on with the FCJ, and they will be building and repairing transformers and manufacturing PVC pipes to start. We anticipate that about 200 to 250 jobs will be created um, for residents and residents in surrounding areas. And we're working with a lot of stakeholders from the private sector. Um, I have private enterprise um, and entrepreneurs who are looking into agriculture projects that will be bringing hundreds of jobs, shrimp farming and other things of that nature. So we have done a lot. We have focused also on youth and sports and security. Um, but most importantly, I think that we have established ourselves as a government uh, that is competent, a government that the people can be confident in, um, and the kind of government that you need in the most challenging times. Not just leadership, but leadership with a vision and leadership with the ability to, to push through. There are so many things that we heard could never be done. I mean, I remember in 2016, we're told 1.5 could never work, and it worked. Uh, Mr. And Charles, so you, you mentioned. To establish ourselves. 
You mentioned SCJ in your remarks. Now, the closure of the Money Musk sugar factory has affected residents. Yes. Is there a plan or have you started discussions yet with stakeholders or is there a plan for that? How will you address the closure of the factory to Definitely. bring back sugar, which is a lifeblood of your constituency? Definitely. So we have worked with uh, the farmers. We have met with the farmers. We are coordinating with the farmers and the ministry. I have reached out to the Minister of Agriculture. Um, we have sat down and had discussions on the alternatives that are going to be put on the table. I know that there are negotiations taking place right now that are quite sensitive. And the intricate details of that um, will, will be revealed at some point in time. The important thing to note is that we are offering alternatives in jobs, such as the jobs that will be, uh, the job opportunities, opportunities that will come at the redeveloped free zone. We're offering alternatives for our farmers through the program that's developed by the Ministry um, of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries to provide land for those farmers that have been displaced and to let them get support through the ministry for them to start their own small business in farming. Um, and we are also, as a team in South East Clarendon, looking into giving specific supports to some of those farmers that have been displaced and their families in terms of support for them to, to start in small business, um, in terms of support for them to, to get education grants for their children. Um, and we're focused on, on ensuring that they don't feel like they're left behind. Um, as to whether sugar will return, that's a matter that we have to look on with a very careful eye so that we're making the decision that is best for our future, not just the decision that sounds good for now. And so we are working with the technical experts who are assessing that situation and are going to be able to guide us as to what the best option is for Jamaica when you look on the global market and look on where we are and how we position our country. We're also doing a lot of training. We have worked with heart to set up Southeast Clarendon for training once we're able to start. So we're talking about animation, we're talking about agriculture, we're talking about cosmetology, auto mechanic, so that many of those families that have been displaced can have an alternative. We understand the frustration. I've walked the money more scheme. I've heard their cries. Um, and I'm going to be here as their advocate to ensure that the government does what it has to do in terms of the support for those displaced workers. Okay, uh, Mr. Charles, there has been political tension in your constituency over this recent campaign period. Have things, should I say, died down a bit? And how have you been dealing with that to address it to make sure that there's not a long, no longer a flare-up again? Well, the incidents that have occurred primarily occurred to, to JLP workers. Um, you know, we've been careful to, to try to not fan the flame. But the facts before us are very clear, you know. So what we are trying to do is to work with the police um, and to send whatever information we need to the political ombudsman so that any allegations we get or reports we get of political violence or intimidation, um, we, we divert them to the respective and relevant authority. I have sent a message to all constituents, supporters and others that all of us must band together to reject political violence. All of us must band together to know that in 2020, you should never be telling someone that they can't vote for a political party or they're going to lose their job. Um, it's, it's serious times in Southeast Clarendon, and we are ensuring that we make sure that the supporters, particularly Rocky Point Division, where there have been some incidents of violence, um, that they feel that they can go and vote without any hindrance. And so we've asked the police for some extra support in that area. Um, and we are, we are relying on them to make sure that there is an environment set that people can execute their right to vote. Uh, we've also heard of reports of vote buying, which is very unfortunate. Um, but again, as I've said to supporters, unless you have evidence, you have to be very careful. Um, there, there are one or two persons that have written statements and we are directing them to, to get those statements to the relevant authority so that we can have a free and fair election in Southeast Clarendon. 
Uh, Mr. Charles, you had said in an interview that the killing of the JLP activist Paul Henry could have been politically motivated. The political ombudsman and the police have since indicated that that's not the case. Have you accepted that finding? I think it's very unfortunate that any, any authority set up to investigate a matter of that nature, um, well, no authority rather set up to investigate a matter of that nature should come out with anything conclusive in under 24 hours. Uh, what ought to have been said in my estimation is that they are exploring all, all avenues to identify whether or not it is. None of us can know, but the reality is that a political activist doing political activity uh, was killed the night before nomination. And as his family has said, they are not trying to pin it on any particular group. What they're asking for is a full and thorough investigation without blinders. Don't tell yourself that it cannot be that and you don't investigate it. Investigate everything. Paul deserves a full investigation. And wherever it leads, once it is properly investigated, I'm certain his family will accept it. It's not a matter for me to accept. My responsibility is to the family and to the constituents to make sure that they are safe. And wherever I see violence, political or otherwise, I'm going to speak up and I'm going to expose it so that it doesn't rear its ugly head. And that's my job, to make sure people feel safe and secure. And that's why I sent the kind of message, the strong message that we sent. We don't want anybody to get up. And I got phone calls of persons wanting to leave the constituency. So whether or not it was political, that's the impact it had. It had a political impact. And so I've called on the police, um, and I believe that they will respond and have responded. Um, and you can see where many of the constituents uh, feel much more confident in the process now that they'll be able to go out um, and, and support a campaign if, if, if that's what they want to do, and go out on September 3rd and vote if that's what they wish to do. Okay, we have to leave it there for now. Thank you very much, Colonel Charles Jr., the JLP's candidate for Southeast Clarendon in the September 3 general election.